Hi, I'm Chris Hahn, SI Car News. Thank you for being here. Today we've got a special treat, a special kind of car, and we're going to talk about it right now with our guest, Kurt Morris. Kurt, thank you for being here. Hi, Chris. Thank you for coming today. Um, yeah, you see the car in the background. Uh, this car has quite a story. Uh, my uh, dad was Jim Morris. Uh, some may have remembered him, but um, back in the uh, late 50s and early 60s, my dad drove a 54 Mercury uh, two-door hardtop, and uh, he dated my mom in it and was actually driving the car when they were married. As time goes, you know, they, they married, they had their family, uh, they went to work, started their lives together. Don't know whatever happened to the first old Mercury, but it went by its way and so forth. So, uh, as my dad got a little older, uh, he started thinking about he'd like to have an old Mercury to restore. My dad actually had a friend that lived uh, just outside of Phoenix, Arizona in a little town called Buckeye. And one time he and my dad got together and they were talking about old times and, and he told his friend John, he said, John, I'd, I'd like to find an old Mercury to restore. And dad got a call one day and uh, it was John on the phone. And he said, hey, he said, I found a, an old Mercury out here. It says two door hard top, Monterey. And uh, he said, now it's, it's, it's kind of rough, but he said the body's good, of course. So dad told him, he said, well, John, he said, if, if you can secure it, just go ahead and buy it and I'll send you the money and then I'll make arrangements to come get it. It's kind of a funny story. He got out there and, and he was gonna drive it home. And uh, it took my dad almost two weeks to get home in that car. Uh, he got there and, and that's what it was. It was a nice body. It had no interior. Uh, the motor was questionable at best. And uh, he started home in it. So I never will forget, I was about 13, 14 years old at the time. And he pulled up in the driveway and I was, I was outside shooting baskets or doing something. And anyway, he parked the car and shut it off. And he got out and he was grinning from ear to ear. And I thought, that's the ugliest car I've ever seen in my life. After he shut it off, I don't think it started again for a month. He and I had pushed that car in the garage and out of the garage and in the garage and out of, you know. And finally it ended up, he and my uncle and several others, they took the tank off the car and changed all the gas lines and they eventually got it running. So, so dad had his dream car, you know, and, and he decided, he said, I'm gonna take it back just exactly like what I had when I was a kid. Uh, and he had a paint job on the car like you're seeing here that was dark blue with a white top. And, he took it to a, a fellow in Equality that had just started a body shop at the time uh, by the name of Kenny Price. My dad, uh, he worked at Eagle Two in Shawneetown, worked in the coal mine and had a lot of friends there and he kind of liked showing the car off to them. And You know, at the time we're, we're talking about maybe 1980, 81, 82. He was enjoying the car and, and my dad went in the hospital uh, for a simple surgery and, and I tell you, unfortunately, he never came home. So he was a young man, 47 years old when he passed away. And uh, here I was, I was a 19 year old kid going to college. Uh, my mom all of a sudden went from my dad's coal mining salary to uh, trying to make a living on a little old clothing store in Equality. And uh, it, it was tough, times were tough. So I never will forget, I went in one night and we were sitting down to eat dinner and uh, I looked at my mom, I said, I think I'm gonna sell dad's car. And um, she looked at me and of course I expect her to say, oh no, you're not going to sell that car. And actually my mom looked at me and said, you might need to. So I did, I put it out in the front yard. We lived down on Route 1, uh, just south of the crossroads and put it out in the front yard. And a couple days later, my neighbor from across the road came over and was asking me about the car. And, and uh, he decided he would buy it. And a couple years after the neighbor had bought the car, my mom talked to him and, and he said he had sold it to a collector. And, and you know, I just took it, well, it's gone. It's, it's, it's gone. So one day, uh, it'd been about 25 years, and uh, it was getting close to my dad's birthday, the anniversary of my dad's birthday, and I, I got on the computer and I typed in 54 Mercury, and, and pretty soon it showed up, and there's two cars available, one in California and one in Florida. And uh, I hit that button for the car in Florida, and the first picture that loaded, uh, I almost fell out of my chair. My mom was there at the church that day, and, and I went and got her. I said, come back there, I want to show you something. And, she walked back there and I said, have a seat. She sat down and, and um, I punched the picture up and, and she, she looked at me, she said, well, that looks like your dad's car. And I said, mom, I believe that is dad's car. And my wife pointed out something. And if you'll notice, and there's a little round sticker in the back window of that car. And we were looking at some old uh, pictures where my dad had had the car in a parade. And, and there was that sticker in the back window. And my wife said, look at the back window. And sure enough, that sticker was in the, in the pictures on the internet and in the pictures of the parade. And I said, that confirms it. it it's, that's my car. So uh, 
I went ahead and I put in a bid on the car and I, I, I was the high bidder, I didn't meet the reserve. I got up the next morning and, and I made a call to Florida and, and I got a hold of a fella and uh, he was a salesman there at, at Golden Classics and I said, I'm calling about this 54 Mercury. And he said, yeah, he said, uh, we uh, had that car on eBay and it, it didn't sell. I said, well, I was the high bidder. I asked him, I said, did you find any names at all with the car? And he said, we found a, an old receipt in the glove box that was uh, made out to a buy, guy by the name of John Honey in Buckeye, Arizona. And I said, well, that's it. So uh, I, I basically just stopped him. I said, sir, hang on just a minute. And I said, uh, is there anything I can tell you about this car? And he was a little flabbergasted. He said, well, I don't understand what you mean. And I told him the story, basically the story I've just told you. He said, well, can you hang on just a minute? And I said, yeah. So a little while and he came back to the phone and, and he says, well, how's this sound? And he actually shot me $1,000 cheaper than what we'd already agreed on. And I told him, I said, well, Bud, you, you know that I'm going to buy this car no matter what. And he said, yeah, but he said, I went and told my boss this story. And he said, we're going to pay the shipping to send that car home where it needs to go. Amazing. Uh, there's still real people in this world, Chris. Yeah, there is, Bud. There is. My dad always, always taught me that good things happen to good people. And uh, I just felt like that it was a, a blessing of God that, that he allowed my dad's car to come back home before it ended up crushed or something, you know. And um, I appreciate you coming over and allowing me the opportunity to, to tell my story and to share it with others. Uh, I'd also like to say that, that I appreciate all that you do for the car community in Southern Illinois. Uh, I told somebody the other day, I said, I've been doing car shows and, and been involved in the car community for about 12 or 15 years now, and I don't remember ever being at a show that you weren't there. And, and that says a lot for your dedication to this Thank hobby, you. bud. Thank and, you. I, and I appreciate it. Well, buddy. I appreciate you I telling do. the story. This is a, a, a true American story because cars are part of our families. They That's really are. And I know that you have this car and honor your dad. And uh, I haven't met your dad, but I've met his son and I know that he was a fine person. Thank you, man. I Kurt, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.